Hello, hello, everyone. Looks like I'm alone so far, but that's all right. I'm used to doing this to the beat of my own drum. Uh, welcome, this is Rachel Kay with Looks Like Film and Rachel Kay Photography. Uh, today, I'm going to be editing some photos with the Tribe Archipelago. I believe I'm saying that properly. I studied it a couple of times today. Uh, presets, um, Ryan Longnecker's set. So we're just gonna dive right in. Um, sorry, I was a, a moment late. I had to put wood in the fire. Uh, I live in the country and that's how I keep the house warm. So uh, it took a moment, I had to go outside and get wood and my dogs are, don't listen. So anyway, so we'll get started here. Let's screen share. All right, so here you can see, I'm gonna work on some of the same photos um, that I did yesterday uh, with with Ryan's presets this time. So uh, I figured I'd start with this one. I already was kind of playing around to see what kind of tweaks I would want to do. Um, so uh, hold on, my assistant just messaged me. Hold on. Okay, sorry guys. So um, this was an image that I got. This is shot on Nikon. Uh, I think I said yesterday, I've already pulled up the exposure. Um, like how I shoot, this is very underexposed, which is just fine. I love underexposing. So we're gonna go through some of Ryan's presets with this guy. And I actually already changed the white balance to auto. So, and a lot of times auto works really well for me, sometimes not so much, and I have to play around with it. Uh, and I just calibrated my monitor. I think I mentioned this yesterday. So. Tell me if you guys think I'm way off base. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A section here and I'll get to them as I come along. But this right here is Ryan number one um, with the white balance tweaked. I think the skin tone is just lovely. So uh, I wouldn't even change a thing. Uh, Ryan's one is one of my favorites in his, his pack, so. Um, and this is Ryan two. Ryan two is a lot darker and much more contrasty. What I found in order to make that one work is to just bump the exposure even more and kind of alter your white balance. This one has some cool split toning in it, which I kind of like, but it does do some things to the, the whites. So that's not ideal for everybody, but I still like it. So that's before and after. And of course, like any preset, um, if you have a horrible photo to start, nothing is gonna save it. So you have to remember that. The lighting is really great in this shot. Um, shooting underexposed, I feel like tends to work really well with a lot of presets. These as well, you just have to um, change, uh, add your exposure afterwards. And so that's number two. And number three is a much brighter preset. So I think the exposure needs to come down a little bit. Uh, Ryan had mentioned he had posted a bunch of examples of how he tweaks things with these presets to make skin tones look better. One thing that I always do is remove grain and I'm not gonna take the time to do that because my Lightroom is running oddly today. I don't wanna have to close it out 700 times for you. Oh, there's five people here. Uh, guys, feel free to ask questions or just say hi in the questions thing so I don't feel lonely. <laughs> uh, so this is, what did I just do? Number five, Crap, what am I doing? can see I've done a lot of things here. I have a lot of presets on my on this computer. No, what did I just do, you guys? I'm at, kind of out of it today. I just shot an elopement and I'm gonna actually show you some images from the elopement. Oh, this was number three. I'm gonna show you some images from the elopement that I just quickly picked out with these presets too. So this is the before of three and after of three with a huge bump in exposure and I adjusted the white balance. Ryan just said hi. Hi, Ryan. Good to see you. I'm going to sing you happy birthday here in a minute and everyone's going to have to deal with it. It's going to be hilarious. Okay. And number four, this one's really, really punchy, contrasty. Again, just increasing uh, the exposure or decreasing contrast also works really well for this one. And when I was playing with this, um, I also kind of messed around with the curves a little bit. And, but sometimes I just don't feel like working that hard and I kind of like this. It just really depends on your personal taste. This pack is so diverse, I love it. And I feel like there's at least one preset in it for everyone. So this again is, oops, the before, come on, work. Before and number four. And then number five is a much lighter preset. Yay, Ryan, hi. So I feel like I don't need to add up the exposure, of course, 
exposure is kind of one of those things a lot of people edit moodier or if you're editing brighter, that's kind of to taste, so. And then Ryan's black and white is my favorite. I just think it's magical. That's done in my mind. It's so close to my personal black and white preset. It makes me feel kind of sad. I probably worked on it for like two years of my life. And I'm like, Ryan just handed it to me in a crystal platter. It's terribly rude, Ryan. <laughs> just kidding. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> so that's like a really ideal lighting situation with Ryan's presets. So I'm going to move into a less than ideal situation. I'm going to choose this really crappy image that I horribly called. I don't like it. I have another one, which I do like, um, this is the before where their faces where his face isn't making this weird, funny face thing going on. Like, look at his face. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm getting married. <laughs> uh, so we'll play around with these here. Um, I do like one on this. Um, sometimes auto works. See, now that's too blue for me. So it may be a little too green. Hi, Bernie Photo. Nice to see you. Welcome. I'm just playing around with Ryan Longnecker's presets. Um, I'm obsessed with this pack. I'm actually obsessed with all of them. I'm currently editing a wedding with all three. I can't wait to share that with you guys. So uh, this less than ideal lighting situation works really well with this pack and it looks like really blown out on my other screen. So I, sometimes I don't, I have, whoa, Rachel, got a new mouse and it likes to do stupid stuff, like have its own life. Come on, get it together. Anyway, you get the idea. It's magical. So this is the before, Blech. yuck, and after. And one thing with this preset that I find myself always doing is bringing down the highlights. So just bringing down these highlights is really helps bring back a lot of the detail in the highs. So that's something that I do all the time with um, Ryan number one. So, yep, that's probably, I would say, good for me. All right, let's look at number two. Uh, this, if you have like a really vintagey film look, this would be really kind of perfect for you. Um, white balance is all wrong for me so let's see what it what auto does see and now it does weird stuff so number two i think doesn't work super well indoors uh but i love what it does for outdoor images so that's number two i would adjust and play with the white balance more but i'm not going to make you guys watch me do that for like 700 hours that seems silly when we get into like a nice up close skin tone i will i will kind of spend a little more time showing you what i do whoa why did you zoom in rachel And number three is my favorite of his for any indoor photos. It works super well. You don't have to increase the exposure as much. I always take out the grain. You can see all the grain, but grain is kind of a personal preference thing. So that's obviously up to you. And I think this just looks absolutely perfect. This is the one I would choose for this situation. And again, um, with a same with one, I bring down the highlights a little bit just to save some of that detail, especially in her, her dress. So this is the before and after. And obviously, um, I shoot in auto white balance. Something I really want to work on is shooting in Kelvin because white balance is, I think, every photographer's greatest ne nemesis. So so that was three. Let's play with four. Four is super punchy. If you like it, cool. Um, I don't like it a lot for indoors, but if I were going to use it, I would just bring down this contrast quite a bit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And it's got like a... I can't remember what the split toning is, but I do like it. It's obviously everything is up for personal preference and what fits with your style and your brand. Number three is the closest to my style, but you know, something for everyone. And then number five, I also really like number five. Again, for indoor stuff, I bring down highlights of almost all of his presets. So and then messing with split toning sometimes helps too because his are, I think almost all of yours are, are split tone, right, Ryan? I can't remember. But sometimes that helps with skin tones um, or just adjusting white balance. And this before and after. And then the black and white, the most magical black and white ever and done. Maybe you might bring down the highlights again just because you're dealing with a bride with white dress. You want it, she wants to see the details in that dress she spent all that money on, so. So that's a less than I, yes, I think all of yours are split tone too, right? Ryan just interjected. 
So it's Ryan's birthday today, guys, which is why I decided to do his pack today. I will be doing Lauren and Chris's pack tomorrow, but I figured, oh my gosh, I saw last night. It's Ryan's birthday tomorrow. I'm definitely going to do his pack today. So let's move on to another fun photo. Um, one that, let's do, ooh, let's do one from the wedding I just shot. How about that? That seems fun. And I actually just posted this on my Facebook. So this is the after that I just did. Um, I used, what did I use? Gosh, Rachel, you need to write this down. I used number one and I just adjusted the white balance um, and I changed the exposure a little bit and that is it. Do I have any presets? Yes. Ryan just said, taking the split toning off of any of the presets will help with a natural look and preserve true whites. I couldn't agree more, but sometimes, sometimes presets these presets will like just fix your white balance because of the split toning too. So um, you might not even have to adjust your white balance if it was all mucked up already, which is why I think I like his number three a lot for indoor because it messes with the gross yellows. And Lindsay Davino just said, happy birthday to Ryan. So I'll show you the before of this one. Boom. I underexpose always. And, uh, oh, what did I just do? Did I like remove that? No, nope. yeah, I did. I removed it from my collection. Guys, epic fail. <coughs> so before, so that was with Ryan one. Let me look at Ryan two on this image. Really punchy, contrasty, um, again, if you just increase the white balance quite a bit in, or decrease the contrast, that gets you much more of a creamy look. You can see um, the skin tone wise. What I would do is most definitely remove the grain in this one for skin tone, true that. Oh shoot. And um, probably actually play with the reds because he has kind of a red skin thing going on. Um, and her skin looks a little orange, so I might play with the reds and oranges, but her scarf is still so true to the color. I really like that about this. And yeah, and his suit, this is like really what a suit looked like in real life. When it was taking pictures, it looked much more the, in the photos, in camera raw, it looks bland and his suit was blue and really lovely. So I like that these presets help make that happen. So that was number two. Let's go to number three. I love number three. Uh, I wish I could give the whole world Ryan number three because I think it's magical. Like, look, I don't. That was one click. Exposure changed. I had custom white balanced already, and I think that's pretty majestic. I would get rid of grain, but I'm just not a fan of grain. Sorry, Ryan. I just don't like grain. Um, but again, personal preference. So that's the before and after with three. And number four is very punchy, contrasty. Uh, you can see it really gives him a reddish face and her much more inch skin. It reminds me a lot of two, but I like the split toning in this one a little bit more than two. I feel like just adding, increasing exposure, it's a great contrasty image if that's your style. And number five, ooh, it's so pretty and soft. I might. I tend to like not deliver super bright images, so I would probably bring the contrast down a little bit. And this looks, his suit, the blacks are much more true to like how they were shot, I think, in this one. And black and white, one and done, love it, it's perfect. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> Should have turned that off before I started. Anyway, I'm actually doing updated set. Oh, Ryan just said, I had mentioned that I didn't like grain and Ryan just said, neither am I actually. I'm going to be doing an updated set where I correct my grain and vignette issues. My sets actually have a lot more grain than I would have liked for my final product. So those will come out when ACR is released too. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. I'll have to make sure to re-download it then. That's absolutely fantastic, Ryan. Yay. Oh my gosh, there's nine people in here. That's pretty great. Okay, uh, let's look at another image that I worked on yesterday. Um, I actually already applied the preset to this, fail. 
So this is the straight out of camera. And this is a, so I just showed you a Canon shot image, one that I shot myself. This one was sent to me by my friend, Lauren Lindley, and this she shoots with Nikon. So I added some of my Canon images because I was only playing with Nikon images just to show you um, how that worked. So I already bumped the exposure 0.24, um, and that's all that I've done, just because she's kind of in the shadow here. And this is Ryan number one. I think it's magical. I think it's just beautiful. Obviously, you can tweak it to what you want. Oh, someone just asked, what's ACR? That's Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, we only released the presets for Lightroom. So, and a lot of people were like, where's Adobe Camera Raw's presets? So uh, we're currently, right now, working on developing them for Adobe Camera Raw because a lot of photographers edit in Photoshop slash Camera Raw. Uh, I think they should just be editing in Lightroom, but because it's faster and batch editing is the best, but you know, to each their own. And it'll be great to have that option available for everyone. <gasps> Daniel Sprague said, miss your face. I miss yours too. Makes me nervous that you're in here. <laughs> so, okay, so this is number one. The buff Don't zoom in, you guys. This is amateur stuff. I didn't do any of this yesterday. And after, love it. And number two, again, much more punchy, contrasty. I love what it does with the blues, though. Like, it makes this majestic teal. And if you do any um, landscape stuff, it just, it's freaking magical. So, Stacy said, can't wait for ACR. Yeah, neither can I, because I think it'll be awesome to have more people have access to these. Do note, though, if you currently buy them, if you do play with Lightroom at all, um, they will be instantly available for download once ACR comes out. So if you buy the Lightroom preset, you also get the Adobe Camera Raw preset, which is kind of cool. All right, so this was number two. Ah, you guys. I'm surprised the cat hasn't come to bother me yet. This is nice. Number two or four, after. All right, so I promised I was gonna sing Ryan happy birthday, and so I'm going to. So uh, get ready for that. <laughs> I think it's the perfect time. We got nine viewers to sit here and listen to my horrible singing voice saying happy birthday to Ryan. If anyone wants to join in, feel free to get on video and uh, sing along with me. So this is number three, which is my still my favorite before, after. Love it. It's really on point with my style, which is probably why I like it so much. So, um, okay. As I said that, a cat joined me. Get out of here, cat. I'm trying to train my cats to not bother me when I'm in my office, but they don't listen. Cats. So that was three. Let's look at number four. Number four. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ryan. Happy birthday to you and many more. Said I was going to do it. Yay. Okay, so number four actually looks really good with this exposure bump that I did. And I might reduce the contrast a little bit, um, maybe mess with white balance, but I feel like the white balance in camera was pretty decent on this shot. So I'm not going to mess around with it. And number five. Number five is always a little bit brighter. Oh. <laughs> and so you can just bump back the exposure down. Whoa, maybe not that far. So at this point in time when Lightroom isn't going as quickly as I would like it to, I would restart it, but I'm not going to make you guys wait for that because that seems boring. And the black and white. Wait, did I do five? I don't think I did. Shoot, guys. Did I do five? Ryan just said that run at the end. That's some Jesse J stuff. Oh, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> And Daniel said, the Mr. Baldy sticker. I know exactly what sticker you're talking about. It's your favorite sticker. So I can't remember if I did five or not. The black and white is just lovely. I would, again, um, I would like to reduce the highlights on a lot of his stuff when there's a bride in there to get more details in her dress. So, oh, I did do five. Okay, cool. 
So there's that one. Uh, would you guys like to see another indoor shot, outdoor shot? I have so many uh, shots here. I have a really cool backlit one that might look kind of neat with Ryan's stuff. Let's see. So go back to, this is in raw. I love backlit shots. So let's check out and see what Ryan's stuff does to backlit shots. Ooh! I get really excited about things. Um, <laughs> I, I love what it did to the blue tone in this. I mean, it kind of aqua. Uh, I would mess around probably with a brush, actually, or or the white balance to get the green. Um, let's see what it does for auto. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and then I might even still mess with a brush because backlighting, you always get weird things that happen in the dress. But I kind of I like it as is. I'm not going to waste everyone's time looking at it for seven hours. And two, two is really dark. So unless you're going for a really dark backlit shot, I'd bump the exposure on that and maybe even reduce contrast a little and maybe even saturation because of the saturation in her dress, especially here. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that while I'm going through this. Go back to the regular con. Can you stop thing and do what I want you to do? I just set, mm -hmm. Ooh, number three. Dogs, can you please stop? My dogs are wrestling. Sorry, guys. I just yelled at you. <laughs> um, I like number three a lot for this backlit shot. Let's look at it before, after. Really pretty. And go to number four. Ooh, so obviously all of these give you a totally different feel, which is what I like so much about Ryan's pack, because, I mean, anytime you're shooting, if you're a wedding photographer, you're going to be working in different lighting situations. Um, as a portrait photographer, maybe less so, but I think his pack, while he does so many landscapes, works really well for a lot of situations with very minimal tweaks. So this is the before, after, no tweaks. I'm only tweaking exposure really here and white balance um, when needed. So I just think this pack is really great. So, and number five is really punchy and it does some things to skin, but I think in a backlit shot, that's not as big of a deal. I would just reduce saturation on this one. And let's do the black and white. Whee! Oh, I love it in black and white. Only thing I would probably do is just reduce these highlights a little bit. Yeah, you make it a little bit moodier. But I love, oh yeah, that's nice. But I love what it does to all the dust and it kind of gets rid of some of this background jazz. Oh, hi, Luke. Good to see you in here. <laughs> did you miss my song? <laughs> Be so sad if you did. Um, let's do another indoor shot with Ryan's. Oh, I already actually applied number one on this. And I think it's lovely. This is the before, really underexposed. So all I did was bump up exposure, like one and a half stops, applied Ryan one. I think the skin tones are perfect. It looks almost exactly like they did in the before. Not too yellow. And number two, super punchy, not my favorite for indoor shots. I will not lie, but I'll, if you really like want to use this one for like a whole wedding for some reason, which I don't know why anyone would do that, um, decrease contrast or bump up exposure or play with the uh, split toning. So this is the before and after. Number three is my favorite for indoor from Ryan's pack. Uh, I just love it. Again, the only thing that I've changed is, well, I changed, no, I actually didn't change the white balance because I wasn't mad about how it was shot. Um, all I did was change exposure, bumped up like one and a half stops because it's, as you can see, a super dark photo to start. So, and number four, again, very, very punchy, vibrant. Um, with four indoors, I would reduce saturation a little bit and uh, maybe the contrast just a smidge or increase exposure. I'm not gonna do that. It takes too long. 
especially with my mouse acting up. I really just, I'm doing this to show you guys exactly what they do to photos and give you an idea of how I would adjust them um, if I were using them on these images. And number five, number five is also really beautiful indoor. I love the brown tones in five. I think it's really lovely. So before, after, only changes exposure. I might change the white balance on this one because she's got an orange Oompa Loompa thing going on, but that's an easy fix by messing around with the toning. <sighs> okay, Bernie Photo just asked, are the presets designed to work together for one body of work, i.e. a wedding, or are you supposed to go for one and make tweaks to adjust for different shooting environments? So I don't think, these presets were designed by specific artists for their taste and style. Um, and so I don't know exactly, maybe Ryan can interject in here with this question. I don't know if they were planning on, okay, one, their whole pack, use the whole pack at a wedding, or if they even thought about weddings at all while doing it. But honestly, I think presets are just a great, is a, are a great way to save time. They're not something that's going to save a crappy photo to start. So uh, obviously shooting properly in camera is always going to give you the best results when you're all is said and done. Um, but honestly, I think these presets more than any other pack of presets I've ever seen, I could use one preset for a whole situation and pretty much get what I want with a lot less time than a lot of other presets. So like in comparison, if I'm using like a, a Vosco preset, I, all of my presets that I currently use for shooting weddings are based off of Vosco or Mastin presets, but they've been like heavily tweaked for different shooting environments. Um, and I would say I would have to do less tweaks to do the same thing with these packs and all packs evenly. Um, they're all very, very different. And when people ask me, what's your favorite one? I have a really, really hard time saying which one's my favorite because I use all of them. I'm super glad that I had the opportunity to get and trial all of them because they are really fantastic. I can't wait to show you guys the wedding that I'm uh, doing with just these packs and like a few tweaks. And I'll post that once I finally finish it, which should be tomorrow. And let's look at the black and white. And Ryan says, I don't think of specific lighting situations. I just went with a variety of looks overall. Very much so. I think that depending on lighting situations, you can use a single preset and adjust certain settings that address the issues that come with indoor, outdoor backlit. For sure. I think that's what I was trying to say, but I didn't want to just presume that that's what the artists were thinking. I'm so glad you're in here, Ryan. That's actually really wonderful. Fantastic. Very well said. So, Ryan said, if you missed it, that he wasn't thinking of any specific lighting situations. He just wanted different looks, which I think is awesome about these packs. They all within them have such different looks that gives you a variety of different feels that works well in a variety of different lighting situations. And then he says, trying to maintain consistency is key. So I would suggest if you do a wedding to go all over with the style or presets you use, but that's always a taste for sure. Yeah, so I wouldn't suggest if you do a wedding. Yeah, so, and I think you'll see that once I finally share my wedding that I'm working on is uh, you can see that I'm using different presets, but you wouldn't really be able to tell um, because the lighting situations change, the presets kind of look the, the same, but uh, also with my style, my clients know that they're they're hiring an artist that, that my, things are going to look different in different lighting situations. So like my clients are used to that and they've seen hundreds of freaking bodies of work for me. So they're used to me doing things that kind of cater to them or whatever. So this is the black and white, which is just so magical guys. I just love his black and white. It's, seriously, this pack is just worth black and white. I've never found a Lightroom black and white preset that I like as much as this one. Nailed it. I think it's great to know. Yep. I think I answered both of these. Um, so does anyone want to see, how long have I been doing this for? I wish it told me how long this was going on for. I don't want to do this for like 700 hours. Oh, look at the time, Rachel. That's a good plan. Would anyone like to see another outdoor shot? That sounds like a good plan. Oh, I'll do this one I did yesterday of this bride. Yeah, that's what I meant. Haha. <laughs> 
sorry, Ryan, I read your thing and um, coming from theater and things, I just like to reword stuff. And so I wasn't trying to, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I like this shot a lot. It shows her pretty back of her dresses. I think this is from my friend Lauren, but I'm not 100% sure. You know, Rachel, writing these things down really helps. And here's Ryan one. So what I've noticed with, with this shot in general when using these presets is I actually like think that it's too bright. Way too bright. And again, with this, with Ryan's presets, um, I like to bring down the highlights. But I love the greens in this. And if you, if you like shooting Mastin, like this is a great Mastin green, filmy, film green going on here. Number two, holy smokes, that's super contrasty. Um, let's see. Oh, wow, like auto white balance is way too yellow. Fail. So I'd probably spend forever tweaking white balance. I'm not going to make you guys watch me like tweak these extensively because that's just sad and depressing. Just sit here for eons listening to me yammer on <laughs> about white balance, <laughs> the bane of everyone's existence. So that's pretty lovely too, number two. Number three is oh so soft and pretty. Again, and it's just because of the, the really awesome split toning in his, I love his split toning. Um, it just gives a different, every preset gives a different look. So if I were editing a wedding and I had like a bunch of portraits of a bride out here, I would use the same preset with my tweaks against all the same background or time or space. And then it might change if we go say into the woods there might be a different preset, but it'll still give like the same skin tone look, arm, but maybe a different feel. Because I think, you know, as a wedding photographer, as you go out throughout the day, there's a different feel in each location. Obviously that's different for portrait photographers, but I hardly ever do those anymore. So I wish I did more. So that was three. And I didn't show the before and after. Good gracious, Rachel. I'm failing at this before after thing, guys. I'm not used to doing this. Before after loverly i love it and i would probably even go in with a brush and so and reduce the highlights even more and contrast even more on her dress or increase con yeah on her dress to see more of the details or it reduce the exposure a little bit more that's maybe too much i don't know that's to taste i feel like there's some photographers who are going to want higher exposed more of a masony feel, and then others are gonna have a lower exposure, more of a moody feel. And I feel like these packs work really well if you are into either of those feels too. It just, with very little tweaks. So that's something, cause I previously used both Mastin and Vosco. Um, that's something I've noticed as I've been playing for the past couple weeks. So this is, what did I just use? Good gravy. You can see that I've been playing so much with this one image. So this is number four before, after, and I feel like the skin tones are lovely. I think that's fantastic. Let's do, let's wait for it to freaking load. Um, again, with skin and Ryan's, just removing the grain helps a lot. Before, after, I think it's beautiful skin. And sometimes having grain actually makes skin look better, especially from farther away, I've noticed. So I will go in um, to alien skin and add grain to shadows or, or highlights, um, and that helps with skin a lot. And number five, which is just a brighter um, preset in general. So I would reduce the exposure a little bit for my personal taste, and before and after. And then the black and white which is a pretty bright black and white. So with this image, this image was shot pretty much exposed exactly properly, maybe a little bit overexposed. Um, I would reduce the exposure and just look at how, oh, how stunning that is. I love it. Ah, oh, what did I do? Cats, cat just jumped on it. Why? <laughs> All right, I probably have time for one more. Guys, let me know, do you wanna see indoor, outdoor? Um, do you wanna see, Backlit? I haven't. guess I haven't really done a backlit shot. I guess this one's kind of backlit. Do 
So I actually already edited this with Ryan one. Um, the only things I did was decrease the exposure a little bit. Yes, Ryan suggests ASE green over Lightroom. Lightroom gets weird. I completely agree. I actually didn't like any green at all until I got alien skin. Um, I hated it. And then once I got alien skin, I was like, oh, this is kind of neato. So thank you. And Luke suggests that I edit an image from in space. Thanks, Luke. Since I have so many space images, I'll let you know when I get that nail that Mars wedding. I'll uh, have to do one of these videos for my Mars wedding. So I applied Ryan 1. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore you, Luke. I applied Ryan 1 to this image. And I love this. And all I did was decrease the exposure because it was kind of um, higher exposure than what I personally like to start with. And I love the skin tone on this. I think it's beautiful. I think it's just perfect. So I'm done with that. I didn't even, white balance was, I thought, pretty good in camera. Um, I don't know. That's just me. You guys can tell me if I'm totally off balance with that. Because who knows? My eyes have been just editing photos for months now. So they might be bleeding and might not see colors right anymore. So this is number two. Uh, number two is generally punchier, more contrasty. Um, and all I did was bring the exposure back to what it was shot at. And I think it's pretty perfect. So the split toning on this does awesome things to blues. There's not a lot of blue in this image, but you can kind of see in the greens where it does some cool aqua stuff. So there's a before and after of number two. And then number three, which is, again, my favorite from this pack. I want everyone to just have this preset because it's magical. What did you do, Ryan? Why is this one so magical? Um, I'm done. Like, I feel good about where that is right now. I might reduce the highlights just a smidgeroo so to get a little bit more of the... Um, detail in her face, but I'm not going to do that right now. And number four, very punchy, contrasty. I might reduce the contrast just a smidge. Um, mess with the split toning a little because you do get some a little bit of fringing thing going on with her face, but I actually like it. So it's artsy and cool. Like if you're a portrait photographer and you deliver things that are punchy, this is a great preset for you. And that's four. And we'll do five. Five is just a lighter, brighter situation. So I tend to have to bring the exposure down um, from what I've been editing other ones. And I, again, really, really like that. Before, after. I love what this one does to the reds. Reds look really cool and vibrant. But not skin, not the skin reds. I don't know how I did that. It's magical. Magical, Ryan, you're magical. And the black and white. It's so fantastic. I, get, I would probably bring the exposure down even a little bit more for this black and white on this image. Okay, I'm going to do one more photo. Um, and then I got to be done. I got to go do other work. So let's see. Guys, what should I do? I actually kind of want to do this magical sky because... Mine stuff does awesome things to the sky. So this was shot, again, by my friend Lauren Lindley. I worked on this image yesterday, too. So uh, you've seen it already. So let's play with this one and Ryan's packs. I haven't even adjusted the exposure yet. So she obviously exposed for the background. Let's see what happens if I do auto white balance. Oh, yeah, I like auto. Um, so I would automatically bring that up quite a bit. And you could just bring the highlights down to uh, kind of save some of that. And that's pretty magical. I love the skies in Ryan's stuff. So we have before and after. Before, after. All right, let's do number two. Again, way more punchy, vibrant, so beautiful. Oh, look at that sky, man. I wish there was just a picture of just the the background. And with this image, I might even go in with a brush and paint over the sky to bring back, to reduce exposure and bring back some of the detail. But I like this preset on this one. This is two, two. 
And all I did was adjust the white balance. Um, it might be a little bit too golden for my taste. I just did auto, but um, I don't feel like adjusting it that much anymore. So get over it or die pissed. <laughs> okay, number three. Ooh, I love number three. Almost all the time I love number three. Like that's, I'm done with that. Again, I might bring back some of the detail in the sky. Maybe remove the grain. That's about it. Three. And Ryan, number four. Very punchy, but I kind of like it in this situation. It really pulls her from the background. Um, one thing I, I think I've said this before about this one, I might reduce the contrast a little bit or increase the exposure a little bit. And you can see I've already increased the exposure uh, almost a little bit over two stops. So that might not be the best preset for this image except I'm a big fan of digital grain. So I don't like adding fake grain in unless it's an ASC, but sometimes I will intentionally way underexpose just to get some weird, cool digital grain, especially for black and white images. And this is number five, which as I said, is a little bit brighter. So I tend to not have to bring up the exposure as much with five, which is kind of nice. Before, after, and I love the, the pink hues in five. So that's five. And the magical black and white, it's just so majestic. And again, you don't have to have it as exposed. So as you can see, his pack is super versatile. I added a, some indoor, outdoor backlit, terrible lighting, awesome lighting. Um, but the one thing all these photos had in common was they were pretty, pretty well composed, the, you know, well exposed, either underexposed, not too overexposed. That's one thing about presets, they can't save a horrible image. So I'll be doing, so that's really it. If anyone has any final questions, I'll stick around here for like one more second. So quickly holler them at me if you wanna see anything for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna be going through Lauren and Chris's pack. Uh, I'm really excited, the last of these videos, um, unless I feel like being crazy and like posting another crazy one or something. I probably will because now this is kind of, kind of fun. So <laughs> um, thanks for joining me, guys, and listening to me sing. Happy birthday to Ryan. Happy birthday, Ryan. Um, and I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful evening and or wherever you are in the world, whatever time of the day it is. Enjoy yourselves and holler at me if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.